minerals and energy resources introduction to the chapter minerals are defined as naturally occurring homogeneous substances that have a definite internal structure some minerals are essential for a body to carry out its chemical and biological processes a rock may contain one or several types of minerals mixed with organic material a geographer studies about the distribution and economic importance of a mineral while a geologist studies the formation age and composition of minerals so here's the difference between a geographer and a geologist the properties of a mineral depend on the elements it is made of and the chemical and physical conditions in which it was formed minerals are classified as metallic minerals non metallic minerals and energy or fuel minerals the metallic minerals can be further classified as ferrous minerals or the ones that contain iron non ferrous minerals and precious metals like gold silver and platinum here we can see the classification of minerals metallic non metallic and energy or fuel minerals metallic is ferrous non ferrous precious non metallic example is mica limestone salt potash marble sulfur granite sandstone etc and energy minerals coal petroleum natural gas now let's see the occurrence of minerals in igneous and metamorphic rocks the smaller occurrences are called veins and the larger occurrences are called lodes they are usually formed when minerals in liquid or molten and gaseous forms are forced upwards through cavities towards the earth's surface examples tin copper zinc lead etc next see minerals in sedimentary rocks in these rocks minerals occur in beds or layers coal iron ore gypsum potash salt and sodium salt are the minerals found in sedimentary rocks occurrence of minerals by decomposition of surface rocks decomposition of surface rocks and removal of soluble constituents leaves a residual mass of weathered material which contains ores bauxite is formed in this way as alluvial deposits these minerals are found in sands of valley floors and the base of hills these deposits are called placer deposits they generally contain those minerals which are not corroded by water examples gold silver tin platinum etc occurrence of minerals in ocean water most of the minerals in ocean water are too widely diffused to be of economic importance but common salt magnesium and bromine are mainly derived from ocean waters India has rich mineral resources in some parts of its territory but they are unevenly distributed. The peninsula rocks Peninsula rocks contain most of the reserves of coal, metallic minerals, mica and many other non-metallic minerals. Minerals in the sedimentary rocks Sedimentary rocks on the western and eastern flanks of the peninsula in Gujarat and Assam have most of the petroleum deposits. in rajasthan rajasthan with the rock systems of the peninsula has reserves of many non ferrous minerals the economic minerals are hardly found in the alluvial plains of north india now what are the reasons for the uneven distribution of minerals let us discuss them these variations exist largely because of the differences in the geological structure processes and time involved in the formation of minerals mine one factor The places from where mineral ores are extracted are called mines. Rat hole mining. All the mineral reserves in India are owned by the government. In Meghalaya, families lay claim to coal deposits and mine coal by digging long narrow tunnels in the ground. This practice is called rat hole mining. Ferrous and non-ferrous minerals. Ferrous minerals contain iron. Non-ferrous minerals do not contain iron. ferrous minerals 
ferrous minerals constitute about 75% of the total production of minerals in India. India exports substantial amounts of ferrous minerals. To be an ore, a mineral should have the following qualities. It should be abundantly available. It should offer sufficient concentration of an element. It should have a commercially viable process of extraction. Iron ore and manganese are two important ferrous minerals mined in India. An iron ore mine looks like this. Iron ore. India is rich in good quality iron ores. Magnetite is the finest iron ore with a very high content of iron which is up to 70%. This iron ore is valuable for the electrical industry because of its excellent magnetic properties. Hematite ore is the most important industrial iron ore in terms of usage. The iron content of hematite is 50 to 60%. Percentage of iron ore in India in different states. In Karnataka it is 26% which is the highest. In Odisha it is 25%, Chhattisgarh 9%, Goa 17%, Jharkhand 12% and other states it's 1%. Distribution of iron ore all over India. Now let us learn about the major iron ore belts in India. Beginning with Odisha Jharkhand belt. Badampahar mines in the Mayurbhanj and Kendujar districts of Orissa have high grade hematite ore. Additionally, hematite ore is mined in Goa and Naumundi in Singhbhum district of Jharkhand. Next is Durpastar Chandrapur belt. This belt lies in Chhattisgarh and Maharashtra. The Beladila range of hills in the Bastar district of Chhattisgarh have very high grade hematite ore. This hilly range has 14 deposits of super high grade hematite ore. Iron from these mines is exported to Japan and South Korea through Vishakapatnam port. Next is Bellari Chitradurga Chikmagalur Tumkur belt. This belt lies in Karnataka. The Kundremukh mines located in Western Ghats are 100% export unit. The ore from these mines is transported as slurry through a pipeline to a port near Mangalore. Last is Maharashtra Goa belt. This belt includes the state of Goa and Ratnagiri district of Maharashtra. The ores in these mines are not of very high quality. They are exported through Murmugao port. Let's have a look at the manganese ore and its uses. Manganese is mainly used in the manufacture of steel and ferromanganese alloy. It is also used in making bleaching powder, insecticides and paints. Manganese ore in India. The percentage of manganese ore distributed all over the country. In Odisha it is highest, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka and others. Odisha is the largest producer of manganese ores in India. It accounted for one third of country's total production in 2000 to 2001. Non-ferrous minerals The reserves of non-ferrous minerals in India are not as abundant as those of ferrous minerals. Copper and bauxite are two important non-ferrous minerals mined in India. Let's begin with copper. Copper is mainly used in electrical cables, electronics and chemical industries. The Valaghat mines in Madhya Pradesh produce 52% of India's copper. Rajasthan is the next leading producer with about 48% share. Copper is also produced in the Singhum district of Charkhand. A copper mine looks something like this. Aluminium Aluminium is lightweight yet strong and hence is used in variety of applications. Amarkantak Plateau Michael Hills and the Plateau region of Bilaspur, Katni are the main areas of bauxite deposits. Orissa is the leading producer of bauxite in India with 45% share. Panchpat Mali in Korapur district is the most important center of bauxite deposit in Orissa. A bauxite mine looks like this. Now let's learn about non-metallic minerals beginning with 
makeup. Let us have a look at the non-metallic minerals beginning with mica. Mica is a non-metallic mineral composed of thin leaves or sheaths joined together. Mica is found in many layers from transparent to black, green, yellow, brown and red. It provides excellent electrical insulation with low power loss even at very high voltages. It is used extensively in the electrical and electronic industries. The main mica producing regions in India are the Northern Chota Nagar Plateau in Jharkhand, Ajmer in Rajasthan and Nellore in Andhra Pradesh. The Koderma, Gaya and Hazari Bagh belt in Jharkhand is the largest producer of mica in India. Next comes Rock Minerals. Limestone Limestone is a form of sedimentary rock almost entirely composed of calcium carbonate. Limestone is mainly used in smelting iron ore and in the manufacturing of cement. Andhra Pradesh is the main limestone producing state in India followed by Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu and others. Now let's have a look at the hazards of mining. Mining is hazardous industry both for the workers and for the residents. The miners have to work under tough conditions where no natural light is available. There is always a risk of collapse of mine roof, inundation with water and fire. The areas around mines face the problem of too much dust from the mines. Slurry from mines damages the roads and the farmland. Houses and clothes become dirty more often than in other areas. Miners are at great risk of getting afflicted with pulmonary disorders. Cases of respiratory tract diseases are very high in mining areas. So what is the conservation of minerals? How we can conserve the minerals? It takes millions of years for the formation of minerals. Compared to the present rate of consumption, the replenishment rate of minerals is very slow. Hence, mineral resources are finite and non-renewable. Due to this, it is important that we conserve the mineral resources. Recycling of metals using scrap metals and other substitutes are steps in conserving our energy resources. We need energy in different forms for all our daily activities. Energy can be generated from fuel minerals like coal, petroleum, natural gas, uranium and from electricity. Energy resources can be classified as conventional sources and non-conventional sources. Let's begin with the conventional energy resources. Firewood, cattle dung cake, coal, petroleum, natural gas and electricity, both hydrogen and thermal are conventional energy resources. What is firewood and cattle dung cake? As per estimates, more than 70% of energy need in rural households is met by firewood and cattle dung cake. A decreasing forest area is making it difficult to use firewood. Dung cake can be put to better use in the form of manure and hence its use should also be discouraged. Now let's see the non-conventional energy resources. Solar wind, solar, wind, tidal, geothermal, biogas and atomic energy are non-conventional energy resources. Conventional sources of energy Coal India is highly dependent on coal for meeting its commercial energy requirements. Depending on the degree of compression during its formation, there are varieties of coal. First is lignite, which is a low-grade brown coal. It is soft and has high moisture content. Neveli in Tamil Nadu has the main reserves of lignite coal. This type of coal is used for electricity generation. Bituminous coal Coal which was formed because of increased temperature and was buried very deep is called bituminous coal. This is the most popular coal for commercial use. High grade bituminous coal is ideal for use in metallurgy. Anthracite coal This is the highest, highest quality hard coal. In India, coal occurs in rock series of two main geological ages. The Gondwana coal was formed over 200 million years ago. The territory deposits are about 55 million years old. 
The major sources of Gondwana coal are located in Damodar Valley. In this belt, Jharia, Rani Ganj and Bukaro are important coal fields. Coal deposits are also present in the Godavari, Mahanadi, Sun and Varda valleys. Tertiary coal is found in the northeastern states of Meghalaya, Assam, Arunachal Pradesh and Nagaland. A view inside a coal mine is very hard for the workers to work here. Let's learn about petroleum. After coal, the next major energy resource in India is petroleum. Petroleum is a major source of fuel for various uses. Petroleum also provides raw materials for various manufacturing industries like plastic, textiles, pharmaceuticals, etc. Most of the petroleum in India occurs in anticlines and fall traps in the rock formations of the territory age. The oil bearing layer is a porous limestone or sandstone through which oil may flow. The intervening non-porous layers prevent the oil from rising or sinking. Petroleum is also found in fall traps between porous and non-porous rocks. Gas usually occurs above the oil because it is lighter than oil. Mumbai High produces about 63% of India's petroleum. Gujarat produces 18% and Assam 13%. Ankleshwar is the most important oil field in Gujarat. Assam is the oldest oil producing state of India. Important oil fields of Assam are Digboy, Naharkatia and Moran Hug region. Let's learn about the natural gas. Natural gas is found along with or without petroleum. It is used as fuel and also as industrial raw material in the petrochemical industry. Natural gas is considered an environment friendly fuel because of low carbon dioxide emissions and is therefore the fuel for the present country. Large reserves of natural gas have been discovered in the Krishna Godavari Basin, Gulf of Cambe, Mumbai High and Nicobar and Daman Nicobar Islands are also important areas with large reserves of natural gas. Large reserves of natural gas have been discovered in the Krishna Godavari Basin, Gulf of Cambay, Mumbai High and Andaman Nicobar Islands are also important areas with large reserves of natural gas. The 1700 km long Hazira Vijaypur Hazira to Vijaypur to Jagdishpur pipeline links Mumbai High and Basain with the fertilizer, power and industrial complexes in western and northern India. Natural gas is mainly used by the fertilizer and power industries. Nowadays, use of CNG or compressed natural gas is increasing as vehicle fuel in the country. Electricity Electricity is generated mainly by two methods by running water which drives hydro turbines to generate hydroelectricity and by burning other fuels like coal, petroleum and natural gas to drive turbines to produce thermal electricity. Hydroelectricity is generated by fast flowing water which is a renewable resource. India has a number of multipurpose projects like the Bhakranangal project, Damodar Valley Corporation, the Kopili Hydel project etc. producing hydroelectric power. Thermal electricity is generated by using coal, petroleum and natural gas. The thermal power stations use non-renewable fossil fuels for generating electricity. There are over 310 thermal power plants in India.